Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. The Junglo is a great morph for both pet keepers and boa breeders alike. Today I'm going to discuss the characteristics and history of the Junglo boa and then show you several different examples of different types of Junglo boas, including some close up footage. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So by definition, the Junglo is a three gene morph combo and it includes any one of a number of different types of albinos plus the hypogene and the jungle gene. So it's also known as the jungle sun glow because it's basically a sun glow ball which is a hypo and albino combined with the jungle gene. So jungle sun glow or jungle for short. So about 30 years ago Peter Kahl produced the first captive bred albino boas and this was really exciting. It was really the beginning of the boa morph hobby and but unfortunately what was noticed pretty quickly is that these boas started off brightly colored as babies but then they invariably would fade to this kind of pale yellowish orange color as they got older and so people needed a way to try to improve the colors of the boas so that they would you know continue to look good into adulthood so someone figured out by taking a call albino and crossing it with a hypo or hypomelanistic, if you combine both genes in one animal, the hypo really enhanced the colors of the call albino. And so because of the warm, rich colors that are not unlike the warm glow of a setting sun, the hypo plus albino combo was named the sun glow boa. As far as the hypo or hypomelanistic gene, there are a couple different names for this. It's also known as the salmon gene or the orange tail hypo. And although these two types of hypo boas had different origins, they're genetically compatible. So hypos and boa constrictors are all compatible and they're usually just referred to as hypo. So although the original founder stock looked a little bit different, the gene itself has the same effect on a boa. There's not a difference between orange tail hypo and salmon with regard to the effects or the genetic compatibility. So people crossed the hypo with the call albino and then as you may know the sharp albino came out a few years later and people originally initially thought that the sharp albino had much better color saturation than the call albino. It just seemed to hold its uh, oranges and reds much better into adulthood. And it was quickly determined that the sharp albino and the call albino were not genetically compatible. They're two different strains of albino. You can't cross the two together to get an albino. So you should keep your sharp and your call uh, project separate. So although people initially believed that the sharp albino was better color saturation, people were able to selectively breed the call albino and they came out with different bloodlines including the lipstick strain of the cow albino and these had much better uh, color saturation and color retention into adulthood than the original call stock. So it's still not yet clear whether the sharp is really better as far as the colors or it's just basically the genetic background and the original call strain albinos really wasn't that good for the color retention. So uh, you can get a sun glow with a, a T positive strain of albino as well, like the VPIT positive, um, and they have different looks. And I'm going to show you a little later in the video an example of a VPI junglo. This is a call strain junglo. And so after the sun glows were created, the jungle gene was crossed in to get a three gene animal, jungle, hypo, and uh, albino and that was called the junglo and the advantages of the junglo is you get this in, uh, increased enhancement of the color it's very very clean animal overall from both the hypo and the jungle genes look at how clean this animal is especially her back it's just this very clean uh, two-toned appearance from the jungle gene so you get this really clean dorsal surface and then the side pattern or the side coloration looks a little bit different and this is a hallmark of the jungle gene. Um, the jungle gene as you may know can also cause pattern aberrancies. You can have striping and you can have you know different shaped saddles. You know this animal has relatively mild aberrancies due to the jungle gene and I should say the hypo also causes a difference in the shape of the saddles. You get these smaller more bow tie shaped saddles. But overall, hypo and jungle really enhance the colors of the call albino. They really bring out the colors and they make the animal look much better. Uh, this particular female is now almost four years old and she's actually looking better as she gets older. 
This is a lipstick line uh, called Junglo, bred by Peter Messery from uh, Motion Reptiles. But I really love how this animal is developing, just beautiful colors. Um, you know, great animal to have in my collection. You know, what I like about junglos is that if you're getting into breeding morph boas, you've probably been intimidated by the sky high prices of some of these newer morphs. But all three genes in this animal have been around a long time, so these animals are really not all that expensive. And you can pick up a three gene sunglo boa, or junglo boa rather, for just, a, you know, maybe two to three times the price of just a wild type normal boa. So it's a great affordable way to get into boa breeding. It's also a really uh, versatile animal to have because it contains uh, one recessive gene in the homozygous form, you know, so two copies of the ca albino gene. And it contains two uh, incomplete dominant, also known as co-dominant genes, the jungle and the hypo. So I could breed this animal with a normal wild type you know, boa that doesn't have any morphs. And half of them would be jungle, half of them would be hypo. You know, 25% of them would be hypo jungles. And they'd all be het for the call albino gene. So really powerful way to get into morph breeding. And since all three genes in this animal have been around for several decades, they've all depreciated in value. And I don't anticipate that the value of these animals is going to go down anymore. In fact, I anticipate the value will go up. And in fact, in the last year to you know year or two, the value and the price of morph boas has increased. So, you know, the initial morphs come down pretty precipitously, but then once they reach a plateau, that's dependent on the rest of the boa market. And as you probably know, the boa market has been going up in general lately. So animals like this have increased in value. So junglos are a great low risk way of getting into boa morph breeding. Depending on the type of albino you use in your junglo boa, the animal is gonna look different, especially between the T negative strains like the call and sharp and the T positive strains of albino like the VPI T positive. I'm gonna show you a VPI T positive in a minute. First, I wanted to show you some close-ups of this beautiful animal. So I'm gonna get out my close-up lens. Here's a close-up of my call jungle boa. Such a cool looking animal. You can see how clean her back is. You know, the jungle just really cleans up the dorsal surface and then those saddles are mostly due to the hypo although the jungle does have some impact on the saddles as well although this animal doesn't really have any striping or bear you know much aberrancies from the jungle gene but then if you look at the sides check out how delineated the color band is you can see the coloration on the sides but then a very clean dorsal surface from the jungle gene and these genes just really combine very well in this three gene morph animal. And she's just been getting better with time, uh, you know, as she's gotten older. Most call single gene animals will often fade in color by this age. There's her head in close up. Just love the colors. This animal, her head has been kind of getting more and more orange as she's gotten older. I'll just do a pan to show you how cool looking this animal is. The thing you probably noticed is how tame this animal is. You can see she's just kind of hanging out. She's not trying to escape, letting me film her. And I found in general, my morph boas are easier to film and photograph than my locality boas. They're just much more domesticated, much less wild, and they'll typically hang out a lot more. So probably good characteristics if you're looking for a pet boa, as opposed to you know a natural specimen, like a wild type you know locality boa. So that was the call junglo. Now I want to show you another example of a junglo. This is called a VPI T positive junglo. So the only difference from this between this animal and the call junglo is this, this animal has the VPI T positive albino in place of the call albino. And so this is uh, just VPI in the, hetero, the homozygous form, two copies, plus the hypo, plus the jungle. The T in VPIT positive stands for tyrosinase, which is an enzyme involved in the synthesis of melanin, which is the dark pigment. And because the uh, T positive albinos have a incomplete interruption of this gene, they retain more melanin and in general, they're a little bit darker in color. And in fact, I did a discussion of the different albinos in a previous episode, so check that out if you want more detail. But the VPI, is, as I've said before, is an awesome 
morph, one of my all-time favorite morphs. So looking at this VPIT positive junglo, you can see it, it looks quite a bit different from the call T negative junglo. Um, you know, the ground color, you, as you can see, is different. It's rather than being kind of a bright uh, yellowish ground color, it's more of a little kind of a pale orange background color. Uh, you can see that the uh, markings are much redder. Uh, you can see the saddles are much redder looking at the sides. It's much redder. Uh, you can see that uh, delineation of the side coloration and the background, the back coloration, which is a characteristic of the jungle gene. And you can see how crisp that separation is. Um, looking at the pattern of this one, this one has more aberrancies than the other, the call junglo, due to the jungle gene. And I just love these, the shape of these saddles. You can see the saddles are, some of them are connected. And we have this almost like a small, like a partial stripe. And then I love the geometric shape of these saddles. It's such a cool look, but that's due to the jungle gene large. A little bit of the hypo contributes as well as far as the saddle shape. Um, looking at the colors, one difference you'll notice is that the T positive junglo or junglo has a, quite a few black scales. And this animal has been developing these black scales as she's been growing bigger. You know, getting more and more of them. It's a really cool look. It's almost like a speckling of black scales and not all VPI T positive junglos have this, but this one in particular really has it. But really cool look and hopefully she'll get even more of these as she gets bigger. This one, female is about three years old now. But a really cool animal. One of my you know favorite morph boas definitely. The VPI T positive Junglo boa. And now I'm going to show you guys some close ups of this amazing animal. So here's my VPIT positive Junglo. And this animal, as you can see, amazing appearance. I would even say that this constitutes a living work of art. Look at that uh, saddles that are joined together there from the jungle gene. And you can see how clean the pattern is on the top half of the animal, the dorsal surface of the animal. Um, She's actually sitting still. This animal is pretty much puppy dog tame, even though I, you know, I really don't handle her all that much, but she's just a really nice, sweet animal to work with. Here you can see some of the darker pigments, just the black scales that she's been developing as she's gotten older. And I've actually had people that see animals with scales like this and they think the animal has mites and they're really concerned. I think people are really paranoid about mites because it's like the worst thing that you can get but no these aren't mites this is just the black scales in this uh, T positive jungle boa. We'll just do a close up of her head you can see the uh, head on the stripe on the top of the head has this split between the snout and the, the back and that's a characteristic of the jungle gene so that's a marker if you see that split uh, head spear it indicates your animal might have the jungle gene, although it's not completely diagnostic. And actually not all junglers have it either, but something to look out for. And I actually did a video on jungle boas and the markings that uh, differentiate the jungle boa. So check that out if you're interested. So that was a little bit about the junglo boa. And this is a great boa for both a pet keeper that wants an amazing looking morph boa that you can think of almost as living art, or for a, an aspiring boa breeder that's getting into morph boas, but wants a, a project with lower risk and lower financial uh, investment up front. You know, you can't beat a junglo. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.